Welcome to a video submission of the William and Mary Online MBA Class of 2020 cohort. This film will present the key elements of using the design thinking process to assist those currently experiencing the aging in place phenomena. Specifically, we'll discuss the key takeaways from each of the four design thinking modes and share the insights we gathered along the way. Let's get started. The CDC defines aging in place as the ability to live in one's own home and community safely, independently, and comfortably, regardless of age, income, or ability. In the first phase of design thinking, the discover mode, we wanted to understand what challenges seniors must overcome to be able to age in place. Truly understanding the problem set involved empathizing with our subjects by observing, immersing, and engaging in their situation. This process meant leaving our preconceived notions behind and developing an understanding of our subjects and what was important to them. Through a series of videos, we were able to observe seniors living in different situations. This allowed us to frame the problem set and begin to understand the scope of the challenges these seniors faced. To immerse ourselves in the lives of seniors meant sharing the experience and activities that they must navigate each day. Some of this was done through our own experiences with family members and spending time in the homes of the seniors we were interviewing. To engage in the process meant interacting with seniors, asking them questions and truly listening to their needs and wants. This was accomplished through our interview process but began with consideration on the information we wanted to extract and how we would frame and ask these questions to obtain it. Our initial research allowed us to establish this guide and help identify our candidates to interview. We created an interview guide that began with a brief description of why we were speaking with them and asked them some general warm-up questions. We then focused questions on targeted areas. These questions were specific to understanding how the aging process affected them emotionally and physically and what this meant for their ability to remain in their own home. In sense of home, we wanted to identify their feelings about what their home and community meant to them. We wanted to understand their thoughts on an ideal living arrangement and what would they do to make their home more livable as they aged. In the section on acknowledging vulnerability, we focused on questions specifically on the idea of aging and how it impacts people emotionally and physically. We wanted to understand how they view the word frail and if they were still able to engage in activities and hobbies that they used to when they were younger. In the section on independence and control, we were trying to understand more about how important maintaining their independence was to them. We asked about what activities had become harder and what changes they had made to accommodate for this. We then moved on to questions about the resources and support they had available to them. This included understanding who was involved in their day-to-day -day network and what role family and friends played in caring for them currently and in the future. Our last category focused on their social interactions. We wanted to understand what circumstances made them feel isolated or alone. We also wanted to know what social interactions they maintained and how social media played a part in this.
Define. In the Define mode, we unfold and fuse the findings we uncovered during the Discover mode and coalesce them into needs and insights by measuring specific challenges. We focus rather than flare. Our first challenge is to define our specific users. After defining, we address our second challenge by suggesting an actionable problem statement. Known as a point of view, in the course of our project, we interviewed five seniors, which allowed us to uncover their specific needs and issues during the empathize mode. Understanding seniors allowed us to offer aggregate solutions for building a senior-based community, which allows them access to key needed services. Each team member utilized an interview guide developed during the define process. We all interviewed at least one person that fit the demographic we have been exploring. We utilized a myriad of criteria to develop our interview guide and culled rich materials from various sources, including the field guide to human-centered design. We took copious notes. Some of us recorded our interviewees. Next, we created a comprehensive character profile, first individual and then composite essentially an empathy map that described our interviewees. We were hoping on a better chance of uncovering important insight. Our interviewees include Sandra, 69, Townsend, Georgia, in her home for 30 years, 58 years in the local area. Sandra is widowed. Raul, 65, Bayamon, Puerto Rico, in his home 39 years. Raul is married. Abe, 90, Amityville, New York two years in his current home, and 60-plus years in the local area. Abe is divorced. Joe, 25 years in his home, Gathersburg, Maryland. Joe is married. Marianne, 80 years old, Arlington, Virginia, 15 years in her home. Marianne is single. Next, we articulated our key findings. These are things that surprised us or seemed important. We realized that our respondents rarely shared their insights. They shared data and talk about their needs. It was through our analysis that insights became apparent. Some of our key findings included independence was important. Seniors worried about their future health and mobility, including driving. They want to stay active as long as possible, and they need a sense of home, a place for a family to gather. Needs encompassed feeling to be useful and relevant, having adequate finances as they age, connected to their neighborhood, and not to become a burden on family and friends as they grow older. Finally, insights consisted of mobility and independence is key above all. Physical conditions limited distance travel. Feeling connected was important and fulfillment comes from spending time with family. Our last juncture in the define phase was to develop a point of view or POV. Essentially, it's the next step towards an actionable problem statement. We created the point of view and built it around a composite persona. We uncovered core needs and surprising or important insight. Finally, we developed a definitive point of view statement. A mentally active senior needs a way to maintain a support network and grow friendships because he values his bonds with people and he is concerned about his diminishing support system. His current friends are dying off and he's scared to reach out and make new friends. Our final point of view concludes the find process and was instrumental to ascertain key issues and needs. In many ways, it's the internal epicenter of the design thinking based solution process. In the coming sections, it will become apparent a carefully designed define process may be the key to great outcomes. Create mode. John Maynard Keynes said, the difficulty lies not so much in creating new ideas as in escaping from old ones. And while that sounds like a terrible pun about solutions to aging in place, in fact, it's a fairly apt description of the challenges we encountered in developing effective ideas and overcoming our natural inhibitors to new ideas as part of the create mode. And ultimately, it highlights the benefits we gain from following the processes laid out within design thinking and the create phase in particular.
At the beginning of CREATE, we were building off our POV statement, using it to lead into how might we statements and ultimately on to ideation. And because of the insights we gained from the discover and define phases discussed previously, we actually already had a bit of a leg up on creativity because our POV was a new perspective for us on an old problem. As we began developing our how might we statements, the team used prompts to identify new angles of possible investigation, such as identifying unexpected resources or exploring the opposite. Ultimately, we developed around 15 individual how might we statements, a few of which are shown here. Most were traditional, though each addressed the challenge from a unique perspective, such as how might we make reaching out to new people less scary. Some were a little bit more unique in their approach than others. As we discussed each of the 15, our conversation began to naturally settle around three that we felt raised new opportunities and were therefore most interesting to pursue. And as we discussed them further, we realized that two of the how might we's we were interested in could actually be addressed as possible solutions to the third. And with that revelation, we realized we had our how might we statement. From there, brainstorming became a bit of a numbers game, trying to develop as many unique and creative ideas as possible to give ourselves the broadest range of options. We realized quickly the benefit of focusing on quantity as much as quality as a great mechanism to break through the subtle inhibitors I mentioned earlier. And with each new idea that we added to the board, the creativity of the group increased and increased. And yes, sometimes it may have gotten the best of us. Interestingly, our final idea was not one that had actually been brainstormed. It emerged as we voted on and discussed the ideas from brainstorming amongst ourselves. What we decided on was a bit of a hybrid that combined some of the best pieces of our various ideas, and that we thought had longevity, was cost-effective, and could focus on younger seniors, attempting to eliminate the problem we'd identified before it began. We would create a Senior e-Village, an app available on multiple platforms to let seniors meet, interact, and support each other as they aged. Finally, we worked on our prototype. We developed a slideshow that depicted the key features of the app in order to get feedback on the viability of the offerings we thought were important. We kept it simple, a low resolution version of our design, but with enough specificity to allow a user to walk through it on their own and to experience the interface we felt was important. It didn't have everything. You couldn't drill through the specifics of every category, but it wasn't supposed to have everything. Just enough to get us to testing and get some feedback. Now we are entering the last yet not conclusive stage of the design thinking process, which is the evaluate mode. Although we might have to go back to square one, having the right test plan that gathers unsparing feedback might give us a better idea of where to go next.
While creating our test plan, we discovered how difficult it was not to make it a sales pitch. Despite this, we were successful in developing a plan that would not address how sellable was the product, rather how adaptable it was. We also found remarkable how important it was on previous stages to not sacrifice extra resources since then we would feel somewhat forced to start immediately selling. The first step of our test plan was to explain the test user the problem being solved, which is how to create a virtual community for seniors to help seniors connect, grow their social network, and provide an opportunity to support one another. Then we showed them a clip of a source of inspiration of ours, which is Capitol Hill Villages. This is a program of people aging in place who want to help one another. Then we developed a series of questions that would spur dialogue with the test user and allow for crude feedback to flow. Some more specific than the others, yet all of them had the objective to inspire honest communication. After done with interviewing our test user with the questions we developed, which quite frankly was very similar to what was done in the discover mode, we paired our insights into four categories. The first, grouped all feedback related to what the user liked. For example, some really liked the idea of bartering of goods and services, while others considered the topic right-minded and encouraged its development. The second category englobed all items related to constructive criticism. Some users liked the idea of helping others, but only at the neighbor's or friend's level. With strangers, it might be too much of a task. Other test users mentioned how important would it be for them for the service to be free. They emphasized how at old age it was harder to make ends meet. The third category englobed all questions raised by the test user. For example, how would membership actually work? Could someone earn money or points by providing services? Does it just need to be for seniors? What does barter entail? What does pet finder mean? Our last category contained all new ideas product of interviewing the test user. While some mentioned how the service could work for other demographic groups, some suggested adding carpooling services. Others identified a new target market, highly qualified professionals who are aging in place. Others suggested we build up points for volunteering that could be utilized towards future value. Overall, we received great new ideas. As we concluded pairing up the insights of our test plan, we were able to develop a where to go next list. Review of membership model, how do we bet users and service providers, which offerings do we simplify or expand were some of the items that came up in the list. But all items would point out to one single statement, that we would spend more time gathering empathy for the user if we could go back and repeat the design thinking process all over. Use of the design thinking process allowed us to employ our creative thinking skill sets and embrace ambiguity to solve the wicked problem that we will all inevitably face, the aging in place experience. At the start of this project, we expected a challenge and got one. We adopted a creative environment by building on one another's thoughts when developing interview guides, working closely to synthesize empathy findings into a composite user persona, improvising to build a low resolution but effective prototype, and celebrating some small wins while humbly accepting important user feedback. Each phase brought its own surprises, but most notable was the constructive criticism we received on the prototype in which our user lacked both the confidence to navigate the website and the trust needed to interact with the website due to fear of scammers. These concerns were obvious in hindsight, but surprisingly hard to detect while designing. We now know how to proceed with the design, but if we could go back and do it all again, we would spend more time generating empathy for our user. To quote IDEO's Emmy Kalali, empathy is defined as putting yourself in someone else's shoes, but really it's more than that. It's a chance to fall in love. It's a chance to hate. 
It's a chance to be completely other than that which you usually are, and in so doing, to discover so many other things about life and living. We look forward to applying the design thinking process to challenges we face in our professional and personal lives. We hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.